This is Renee with Metal and Metal Out. Today I got the uh, guitarist and vocalist from In Madison's Wake. Sean, thank you for joining me today. Hey, my pleasure, man. Nice to, nice to be on. Yeah, man. How, how's it going today? You're you're in a different time zone for me. <laughs> yeah, man. It's the uh, middle of a beautiful sunny day here in Melbourne, Australia. Just been down at the park with the kids and it's been a <laughs> pretty happy, just relaxed afternoon, really. Very nice, very nice. And you, luckily, uh, you know, like exciting stuff, y'all release or you're about to release a new album, uh, The Blindness of Faith. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Why did you specifically choose that title for this album? Yeah, so um, The Blindness of Faith is our fourth full length release. Um, we, I guess, focus this one. Uh, we've always had a range of themes, but um, I guess the band's whole lyrical theme has been focused on kind of the dark side of humanity and um, yeah, just the, all the terrible things that tie in with human nature. And the last album that we did, Light Upon the Wicked, just there was quite a lot, a lot of um, I guess religious themes and a lot of the um, evils and. Uh, horrors that have been caused by mankind a lot of them seem to have a, a fairly uh, strong link with religion so um I guess when I went to begin writing the lyrics for this album just so much of the research and reading um, for ideas I wanted to do just seemed to center uh, with this concept of uh, people's blind faith in certain doctrines being a such a strong cause for all sorts of violence and abuse and uh, yeah all sorts of horrors i guess in general so every song that we wrote one after the other seemed to have some kind of religious link and i think a few songs in the title the blindness of faith just sort of came to me we we went with that um i guess the idea of having faith at all, it has to be a kind of blind faith, otherwise there wouldn't be any faith involved at all. So, um, and I guess uh, as a, individuals, we don't believe faith necessarily needs to be a bad thing or an evil thing. There's a lot of people have their own personal faiths and it, it can be a really quite a beautiful thing and uh, bring a lot of meaning to their life. But what we've focused on for this album is that, I guess that element where someone's blind faith in an idea um, can be the cause of hatred or um, uh, yeah just make compel people to do really horrible things um, so yeah it's more of a look on where people have such a strong belief in certain uh, ideas that they would go harm somebody else or, or cause some kind of um, yeah some kind of horror based on the strength of their beliefs it just felt like a very interesting topic to to write uh, you know 10 songs about and each song that we've written really focused on a different area um around that concept but there is that one unifying theme that sort of ties it all together right and unfortunately you it, you know based on that information you, there is just generations and you know centuries of, of people <laughs> doing this you know so it's not yeah. like you, you were running out of uh inspiration to write this no no that's it i mean um there's just so much and uh like i said earlier like religion really can be a cause of joy and and um, fulfillment in people's lives however if you go looking for it there is a lot of dark material to draw on um just even the way that certain doctrines are incompatible with other ones causing you know conflict and then there's a side of um faith where uh, people who are addicted to power or thrive within a cult environment and having dominance over other people um, means that awful things happen. Um, and even looking at different scriptures themselves, there's so many violent uh, messages and contradictions and things that just don't add up. Um, yeah, it was really a gold mine of inspiration for, uh, I guess, lyrical material. Um, yeah, the, the dark side of religion's just got so much in it. Yeah. Now, you know, using that as uh, kind of the uh, foundation to, for the writing of the lyrics, was there just a time to where it's like too much information to where you kind of had to narrow it down to focus on certain aspects? Of course, yeah. So um, I guess the way I wrote the lyrics this time around is essentially I started with almost like a, a brainstorming page and 
just said, I guess, because as a concept, that's quite a big thing and it's hard to cover everything you want to say in, in a single track. Um, so I, I just guess um, I made a list of of the 10 songs and sort of said, well, what do I want this one to be about this and this and that? And let's say, for example, um, one of the tracks is about, uh, you know, contradictory passages and, the, you know, imperfections of the Bible. Um, well, that became the topic for that song. So then the next thing I would do for that particular song is I'd go away and just do a lot of research, um, read, you know, passages of scripture, find things that were questionable, things that don't um, fit, things that don't make sense. And then I don't know I'd sort of write up maybe a page of notes. And then from there, I'd be pulling out sort of ideas and small passages and really what do I want to say with this verse? And then what do I want to say with this verse? And then the chorus that ties it all together. So yeah, I do some pre-reading, um, make up a whole bunch of notes. And then just there'd be uh, lines and passages and little stories that you'd want to tell that would sort of jump out from the notes. So every song got a very similar treatment. And uh, yeah, it just once I'd broken down roughly what I wanted the song to be about and then went away and did some some reading about it, yeah, it sort of started to write itself a little bit. Yeah. So, you, you know, and even with the, you know, it, the obvious thing is technology has made that research super easy. I mean, I remember, I'm, you know, I'm in my 40s and I remember be, being a kid to where when you had to research something, you had to have like a, a set of encyclopedias and you had to go to the <laughs> library. Yeah, <man. laughs> Now we can just click a button and everything's just instant. All, you got all the information you need. It makes it so much easier. I remember, you know, the old days after you go down to the local library to use their, their dial up internet and um, and whatever. So it, it, it is, I mean, anything that you're uh, looking to find, you can just find it with a click of a button these days. I guess the, um, the trick is sort of sorting out the, the good material from the bullshit and because it's just right. so much there and um yeah it, it, having the internet there makes it so easy to just research various topics and you know even there's videos that you can watch there's great podcasts on all sorts of violent history and you know it's just an endless gold mine really yeah for sure now when you write the album this is your fourth album uh do you all write together as a group or does everybody kind of come in with bits and pieces or how did, how did y'all work this time around? Yeah, so our process, we've been um, working with this current lineup for this album and the previous one. Um, and my uh, the drummer's my brother, so we've been uh, playing together for uh, about 12 years. But generally what happens is I'll sort of sit in a room and um, uh, just come up with riffs and things that I like. And by the time I've got maybe two or three things that feel strong together that, that might um, be strong enough to, to build a song out of, then I'll... I'll usually sit there just with um, uh, Mark, who plays the drums, and we'll sort of just feel it out. And he'll try this, he'll try that, he'll suggest doing this to the structure. Um, but then we sort of, once we've got a, a loose structure, bring it into the rest of the guys as well. Um, we, we write very diplomatically. So for us, we all have to have some input. We all have to feel like it's strong. If there's something that's not working, or someone's got an issue with this part or that part, we'll, we'll sort of. Um, We'll nut it out together. So it really is collaborative. Usually the idea will come come from me um, or Lee. Sometimes our other guitarist, he will bring in a full song uh, in the same way that I would, and then we would work on his song together. Um, but yeah, uh, by the end of it, uh, the drums sound quite different. Like I like to have a, just a really loose idea of what the drums might be doing. Um, but I've realised through doing this over the years that I'm, I'm definitely not a drummer. I, I, think of drums like a guitarist and so I keep it my intention's really simple I like I just want you to I'm thinking blast in this bit this part I'm thinking you know a half time snare and then um sort of Mark works within that or has a suggestion for how things might be different um but yeah by the time we're done with all that um the music feels really strong then I generally write all the lyrics so I'll take that away and um yeah and, and sort of come up with a theme um yeah, and write the lyrics for it. Um, I actually write the lyrics for Lee's songs as well. Um, so he does the majority of the riffs, but um, I um, struggle with that a little bit more because when I'm writing my own songs, I've very much got an idea of where this verse is going to be, where this is, this chorus is going to be. So it kind of comes together in my head as I'm going, but with Lee's, I end up like with a slab of music that sounds great, but then I've got to sort of work some kind of structure into that. And, well, this feels like a verse and he might have had ideas that conflict with mine. So 
yeah, we sort of just work all that out together. And um, yeah, the, the guys are really great to work with. Um, we all generally like fairly similar music and, and have an, a, 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 I guess a cohesive idea for what the sound of this band should be. Um, so as a unit writing together, um, works well but you know we clash as well and sometimes people have got this idea or that idea and you know there's a few times where things got heated as the deadlines were getting closer but um yeah we work very well at dy dynamic and the band's really healthy yeah now you know listening to uh the uh, i got a preview album and i mean i i to be honest with you i that's the first time i've i've heard of your band and i mean but the the riffing is solid. I mean, the drum. I mean, the production value is is great to where you can hear every instrument. The vocals are, you know, are, are you can understand what you're saying, you know, shouting out. Uh, but damn, man, y'all sound is is pretty awesome. Uh, Thank it's you. It's almost kind of old school in a sense, but you you have a modern flair to it. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe, and you, and you definitely do sound out because. There are some other bands that are trying to kind of replicate that old sound. It's like, okay, well, this kind of sounds like it's, you know, from other bands that it's been done. And you're just like, yeah. well, I'll just go to the next one. But for yours, I mean, y'all got some freaking kick-ass songs, man. Thank you, man. That means a lot. Like, um, for us, we, uh, I don't know, I've never really wanted to deliberately sound retro or anything like that. For us, we, um, uh, especially mine and Mark, we just love old school thrash metal and, and death metal, especially, um, just endlessly listening to Morbid Angel, Old School Slayer and all that. But um, I don't think you can replicate the sounds that those bands did these days in a really authentic way. So we just want uh, the music to sound natural, like it's being played um, by humans in the room um, and use all the advantages of modern, you know, sound. So when we spoke to Chris, who's done uh, this album and our last album, we were, you know, very clear that we wanted the drums to not be doctored too much. We didn't want uh, triggering of sounds. And um, uh, yeah, I think we have such a blend of influences. Like we don't just listen to, to thrash, like even modern behemoth and uh, bands like Trypticon that just have this modern but incredible, um, powerful production. Um, I think the thing that's fairly old school about us is maybe the songwriting and the, and the style. Like we've obviously all grown up on Slayer and, and Testament and and bands like that but um yeah we want just the songs to have as much force and impact as possible there's a lot of modern recordings that i think um especially the drums just have such a quick cut of sound where you can hear the samples in there one band sounds similar to the next and for me um just having that each album having its own personal stamp and feeling like you're in there um that you can feel the music through the performances is really important um we went, me and Mark went to see uh, Dave Lombardo drum clinic um, when he came out in Australia and um, yeah. we're just such huge fans of his drumming um, and there was, what became really apparent for me is he was sort of sitting a few metres away playing on an acoustic kit and just so much of his personality and the sound of how he plays um, just resonated in that room and just had like this, this essence of Slayer just sort of in the air just by hearing him play. And I think for me, it just made it clear how important it is that you capture the, the spirit of the actual drummer or the, the performance itself and not have that all washed away by, you know, overly modern production and quantizing each little thing so they're on the, exactly on the click. So a bit of that human performance and that filth and that imperfection is really important. Um, so I think, yeah, if you sort of blend all that, um that, that, that way of looking at it and those influences that's sort of reached us to where we're at and um we're just going to give props to the guy who uh, engineered it because he's so like wonderful we worked with him a bunch of times he just captures sounds so beautifully he's a fantastic mix so he's really receptive to what we wanted and um yeah we uh, really couldn't be happier with, with the result of this um previous albums light up on the wicked and um that just sounded incredible but he's just um achieved exactly what I was hoping to get out of this album in terms of sound. So it's nice to be able to listen back to your songs. Even though you're sick to fucking death of them by the time the air recording's over, um, it's nice to hear them uh, and it matches exactly what you'd hope they would be like in your head when you first wrote them, I think. Yeah. And that's actually, a, 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 I think you hit it right on to where, you you know, the capturing that raw essence is very important because there's a lot of bands right now that are just like, 
yes, they're getting technical and they're being flashy and stuff like that, but it's just like overproduced to where it doesn't feel very lively or, you know, real in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's tempting to do, I think, uh, because you've got all these tools at your disposal, but I think just using the tools that enhance the sound, but keeping who you are as a player is really important. And um, I guess even in terms of songwriting, um, we've never been an overly technical band. I think um, there's definitely a lot of flash when, you know, Lee whips out his leads and, you know, uh, but even with that, we want to, uh, I think a good lead is one that you can sort of sing parts to and remember bits. And then there's, you know, uh, it's just got to stick in your head that you could almost play that song, that solo back in your mind after it's gone. If you're just going for technicality, you lose, you know, what songwriting is all about. Um, and I, I like a, just a pounding, you know, 4 4 riff that you can really uh, just get excited by. Well, you know, we'll, we'll venture out a little bit and, you know, go slightly off time here or there. And, but you always want to use it as a songwriting technique. And, um, yeah, like I can really appreciate uh, appreciate a technical band. Like some of my favourite bands are uh, Coroner or Sadus, who are completely off the wall with their timings, but somehow those bands always manage to, um, to tie it together in just these badass songs and there's these riffs you can really get your head around. And, um, yeah, amongst all the cleverness and the flash, it's just really great songwriting. So, um, yeah, I think it always comes back to that. And, um, yeah, just having songs that, stick in people's heads um yeah that, that's got to be that way for it to be successful yeah. i think you're right it's, instead of just being technical it's kind of having like dimebag said having some soul in it you know it's gonna something's gonna knock you on your ass yeah yeah that's it i, I can't hear many examples where just purely technicality sort of set the hairs on my arm on end man but the, there'll be some of the most simple riffs will just you know charge you up and um yeah that's yeah that's what drives me i think yeah yeah for sure now you know one of the big you know hardest things for any band is to break out of the country that they're from you know trying to make it somewhere else uh what do you think has kind of helped you trying to broaden you know get past you know australia into into some of the other countries we've um probably always struggled with that really um it's as you know it's really far away so um what a lot of bands do is take out loans you know they'll go over to Europe for a couple of years and you know buy onto tours and things like that we've just never been in a position or been sort of thing like um three out, three out of the four of us have got kids at home all running careers as well so the band's been something that we've absolutely been die hard about throughout its entirety but, but um just it's always been about having balance so for us um I guess with each release we've really tried to just create an incredible product or at least as close to that as we can possibly manage and then using um the tools at our disposal at any point just really try to push that through to as many years as possible um we were lucky to have the last album put out by punishment 18 records in italy so that was able to get a few listeners um you know in the european markets especially um but this time around i've been very deliberate about um just a proper uh, promotional campaign so um, we've been lucky to have Michael Luders. Uh, he runs a, a place called uh, a company called Black Roos uh, and Metal Roos here in Australia. And um, his uh, whole thing is he you help with your PR, so essentially a PR campaigner. And he's just been wonderful. We've been able to get um, our music out on you know all these different websites, scenes. There's been interviews, reviews, and just having somebody that knows that and I guess has contacts with people that. Um, uh, receptive with him regularly it just seems like a foot in the door and he uh, even helped me uh, create the campaign I had a spreadsheet oh, this happens this week and you know just the, a flow of things where you can keep what you're doing in people's attention advertise in a few strategic spots and really just use the modern advantages of the internet to get your product out to as many years as possible um, but I think it's such an oversaturated market that your the product you're pushing has to be good because um, people are going to be, you know, scrolling on their phone or sitting on the toilet looking at their Instagram or whatever, and, you know, you've only got them for 30 seconds and um, max probably 10. Um, so if it looks good, it sounds great, you can keep people there. And I've, I've found the people that have, you know, happened upon us through, I don't know, a zine post that Michael set up for us. 
if they like what they've heard, they will then go back through what you've done um, and check out other releases. And it's the same for me. If I find a band that I'm really excited about, I don't want to just hear one song. I'll, I'll dig back in and listen to this and listen to that. So for us, we're really just focused on every release at any point, just making them strong so we can stand by any record we've done. And uh, we're, we've been a slow growing band, um, but it's been slow and steady. And we're really lucky to have built just a really solid fan base. And um, uh, I think even at this point, the pre-sales that are racing for this album, um, where we've still got, we've only put out one song, but there's just been so many people, um, even before we put out that first song, put in pre-orders, I think just because they've got faith in, in what we do. Um, and yes, yeah, so I think it's just been a slow build. It's, it's tricky to get it out to people from Australia. Um, and, you know, I've got so much respect for those bands, especially from here that do go tour and tour hard and, and do it that old school way because it's very difficult. I mean, you have to throw away your job at any point and you have to really just live it and spend money and get into debt. Um, so the bands that really put their money where their mouth is and just and do that, got absolute respect for everything that they do. But it's never been our way. We've um, just put the quality into the releases and just use every tool at our, our disposal to do it. That said, in 2011, we did a you know world uh, worldwide Australia-wide tour of every state and territory. We went over to New Zealand. And this year we're planning to go to um, uh, Asia and do two weeks there. And we're actually halfway into the planning for that before COVID hit. And, you know, um, we've toured nowhere near as much as I would have liked. And it was going to sort of be the, the time to finally break a few new, new barriers. but. Obviously, the world's in a very different state at the moment. Um, so, yeah, hopefully when this clears up, we can actually get over to Europe for three weeks and um, and we'll have done all the groundwork for people having heard the release through, yeah, all the yeah, campaign and advertising that we do in the lead up. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely a great right. challenge. Yeah. yeah. Now, I have seen, uh, you mentioned Europe, that some places are slowly starting to open up to uh bands playing even just a small tour and of course i think they still have it at you know limited capacity i think it was either 25 or 50 percent yeah is that, okay. what the, is that what kind of what uh what you're seeing on your side too when you're trying to book some of these yeah well at the moment um we're in so melbourne victoria we're in some pretty hardcore lockdowns like up until a couple of weeks ago there was a curfew the curfew on at 8 p.m and we're not allowed to drive more than five kilometers from our houses at the moment um and so yeah it's ultra restrictive so there's you know zero chance of gigs at any point um but it is like they've got the numbers down quite low so um and i know in south australia so the ne next state over to our left um they've had seated gigs and just a few small things creeping up but um melbourne which you know you'd call the, the music capital of australia easily it's just um it's been completely wiped out at the moment so we're lucky we don't rely on that as a source of income and we just um, we actually got to a point where we said, oh, if things are looking like opening up again come August, then we'll hold off on our release, we'll, you know, tour with it. But got to August, it went back into lockdown and we just sort of said, oh, we might as well just release it because we've got all this music, got all these videos and there's people at home wanting to hear new stuff and order stuff online because what else have you got to do than, you know, wait for a package to come in the mail. So just while well, you've got this captive audience, you might as well. Um, and it's been great. We've had such a great response online because people at home wanting things to do, not able to go out. Um, and I, I think new music just sort of helps. Um, so I rambled a bit and completely lost what I was saying. Um, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> <my story. laughs> yeah, that's it, man. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, at least, there's, there's no chance. We would like to think that, you know, late next year, uh, 2021, that it'll be back moving, at least in a limited capacity. Um, because playing live really is where it's at. And it's now been just over a year since our last show. And um, traditionally, we wouldn't have gone any more than a couple of months without, you know, gigs. It's our favorite part of the whole process. Um, yeah, so hopefully soon, and we'll be able to get back into it. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. Stone, stone cold dead at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a music fan, I appreciate, you know, bands that are still releasing music because you're right. I mean, we're at home. Uh, depending on the, the, the how much you're limited about going outside, but we're at home starving for new stuff, you know, starving for new music. Uh, and like you, you mentioned earlier, you know, finding a band by either through advertisement or PR, I mean, uh, it's, it, it helps out to, you know, that 
the music that you're putting out to kind of help us get get through the day and make it a little bit better or yeah. a little bit easier to kind of swallow the pills that we're having to swallow now. Very true. And I'm a music fan too, so that's keeping me going. Like, um, even noticing some of these big live streams, we watched the uh, the Behemoth one where they played in a abandoned church out. In, oh, I know, man, I missed that one. <laughs> It was amazing, man. Like me and, and Mark, my brother, uh, we said, "Oh, well, let's buy tickets to this thing." And um, so we caught up for a, you know a couple of drinks, just and for half an hour, and then we both started the the show at the same time. And you know, just every now and then we sort of text each other, "Was on? Oh, how cool is this beer?" It just it, it wasn't the same, but um, it was a little taste of seeing a live show again. You know, I had the sound up my headphones, room dark, and um, yeah, and that show was great. Like that. Pyrotechnics and the production values were insane, and so that sort of was really exciting. Um, but then also, there's so many bands still releasing new music. Like, can't wait for the new Sodom, the new Skeletal Remains has just come out, which is great. Napalm Death. So yeah, I was pretty excited to release our music because hopefully there's a lot of people that have been waiting for it. But I know what it's like to um, to get new music as a as a fan myself, and um, yeah, it's, it's it's very exciting. It keeps that that world yeah. alive, you know. Yeah, it's very interesting that there's been a lot of solid releases this, this year so far. I mean, it, once you think it's like, oh, my God, this is like, you know, contender for like album of the year. And then the next band releases, you're like, what the hell am I listening to? Like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's been some great ones. It's uh, It's been a really good year for music um, as far as releases go. So, yeah, totally. Yeah, I think I think yours is going to crack up there, too. For, you oh, know, cool, man. For, for thrash, man. I mean, I really, I'm. It's been, it's been a bit since I've listened to a, a, a good thrash album, and it's like, this is some good stuff. To I mean, you're right, how people can have a short attention span to where it's like, you you got to be able to capture them to where they're going to go back and listen to the whole thing or listen to your, you know, back catalog. And I think, you know, with this album that you come got releasing, it's, it's going to be one of those to where they're going to, you know, go back and, you know, try to figure out more about you and hopefully, you know, Make it a little bit easier, and of course, hopefully for you know the pre-orders, get some more pre-orders, you know, towards your way, and anything to be able to help out. Uh, thank you, man. That really means a lot. Um, yeah, we put heaps into it, so to hear people are enjoying it, like it, obviously, you know, like make me really happy because we've had these songs for so long, and it's taken a long time, and so you always get a little bit nervous, even if you've got faith in what you're doing. You just like when you're about to put it out, it's, um, if it gets well received, it's always that makes you real happy. And, yeah, so, yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, it's like, you're, here's your little baby, you're showing it to everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, you want to say you've got an ugly baby, you know? Like, it's, uh... <laughs> yes, and there are some ugly babies out there, too. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> so, other than pre-ordering uh, the album that you come in, have coming out, uh, what else can, you know, fans do uh, on your website? Can Is there any special packages that you may have coming out? Yeah, so um, we run an independent store just, um, yeah, through our website. So I'm not going to take you straight there. But, um, yeah, we uh, put a lot of time into doing a bunch of bundles for this. Um, so, yeah, there's, like, new long sleeves, uh, new T-shirts, there's stickers, there's, um, yeah, the album's available digital um, and on CD. We actually had the vinyl masters ready to go um, and packages ready for vinyls because we are finally going to put it out the first time. But it didn't work for the album it wouldn't fit on both sides. It was too long. We'd have to cut a song. We tried every which way, man, we got it. Um, but yeah, there's heaps of bundles. Um, and yeah, we've got three other releases and heaps of other merch as well. So that stuff really does help um, people doing pre-orders and things like that. Just, we sort of run the band independently. We always, you know, close to break even slash lose money on it. Um, but for us, it's really, it's the, you know, labor of love and, um, people get behind it it really it really is awesome so um yeah if people want to support the band going on the store would be wonderful but yeah we're very active on our social media too so um there's a lot of new stuff coming on the youtube channel and um yeah the uh the facebook page is always always cranking as well so if people want to you know check out anything else it's probably the best way to do it very cool now before the uh the album drops it will there going to be another video or another single coming out yeah, so I think, let me just check my dates here, the 19th, uh, Monday, uh, our time here, the 19th, we're dropping the next one. Uh, that song's going to be called uh, Graven Image, and it's my personal favourite off the album, so uh, that one's coming up soon. And then uh, on album release day, we'll be putting out uh, the 
closing track for the album, which is called Gehenna. So, um, yeah, there's a few more coming. And at some point, if I can fit it all in, I've got all the footage. I really want to do a sort of a making of documentary. Um, oh, so yeah. just, yeah, got into sort of video editing through the process of um, making the last few videos. And, uh, yeah, just got a lot of, um, uh, you know, behind the scenes on just how the artwork was painted, um, stuff from where the songs were being written or recorded. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping to put it all together and just uh, interview the guys and, you know, just get a bit of a story behind it. Because personally, I just I love seeing that side of it. I just finished rewatching uh, Cannibal Corpse's Centuries of Torment, which is just such a, you know, it's, it's, I love seeing the stories behind it and even the stories behind each individual album and lineup. So, um, yeah, as we were recording, I was just trying to collect as much footage as I could in, in case I felt like doing this at some point. So that'll probably be coming down the pipeline too. Yeah, man, that would be cool. I remember watching uh, my first one that I bought that was uh, like that was uh, the Joe Satriani one oh, yeah. from, from way back. And it was still VHS, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, old school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's always nice to be able to see the background of what goes into making the songs and, how, and you know, just the struggles that, that sometimes you all come up, you know, upon. Uh, yeah. trying to write music and it, it's and and then how it eventually comes together at the end to yeah. where the song is finally complete it's always a nice uh it's a nice change of pace to where, be able to see those things so i'm glad you got that coming out yeah thanks man i've uh I've got to put it together first hopefully it's uh exciting enough to to um you know uh make it a valid sort of thing to put out but i, I think it will be like uh yeah i think a lot of people um sort of don't realize what goes into a recording even the process itself it's such a such a long-winded grind man like um i don't know how many times i would have heard each individual song by the time you've first done the riffs then you've uh you know written it in the rehearsal room then you put the polish on the, the writing and then you um do the pre-production track um, then you set your tempos then you get into the studio and you do the drums and you listen to the drums then you lay down the guitars painstakingly twice for the double tracking, four times for the quad tracking choruses. And then the bass comes in, you listen to all these every time. Um, then you write the lyrics for the song, do demos of the lyrics. It's a, I'm getting bored even just hearing it, you know, like you've got your leads and you've got your synths and you've got your vocals, you've got backing vocals. Then you do the video and you just like, um, you know, listen to the song a thousand more times. Um, yeah, I think to capture some of that, um, yeah, I, I think it's a good insight for people to see because it, um, parts of it are great, but so many parts of recording just that's a sucky grind, man. Like, you know, so but it's always worth it. It's the only way you get an album done. Um, and if you can be proud of it and happy with it at the end, um, it's always, you know, it's always worth all the time. Yeah. Well, you're doing something right because I mean, you're on to your fourth album, so yeah, yeah. so we there's people out here that want to listen to your music, that's true, and um, and we're really grateful for that too. Um, Especially in Melbourne, we've never been short of people that just come to the shows and go nuts. And um, and increasingly beyond Melbourne, beyond Australia, there's so many people that get in touch. Um, we've had a ton of pre-orders come from Germany, even uh, like Russia. There's been a few come in. Just like, you know, these countries where it's like, oh, I've got an order from this country or that country. So like, that's really cool, you know. So, um, yeah. but yeah, heaps of support from uh, Germany, the UK, France. Uh, yeah, so it's been... Be wonderful even a bunch of us um orders have come through as well so yeah just that always, you always get a bit of a kick when someone's heard you from the other side of the world liked it enough to not only listen but um order your music pay the extra shipping that it costs to get over there um and yeah and sometimes i'll just buy a whole back catalog so i've got this huge order that i'm sending to to germany and the, you know the guy at the post office knows me pretty well by now it's just like oh I've got some more merch to send you know so um yeah I, I, Love sending it off. It's, it feels good. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, we're finally kind of uh, finishing up our interview. Any last words or anything else you would like to promote for your band before we finish up? Uh, look, I just really just want to say how grateful we are for the support that we do have. Um, really do put, you know, 110% to every release. Um, we really busted our asses on this one. I feel like it's the best thing we've ever done. Um, I know it's a real cliche thing for bands to say, but. For me, whenever I can finish that big, long-winded process and be really proud of the album we've done um, and feel like all the work's been worth it, it usually means it's pretty special. So I haven't been able to listen back as a listener, um, but I'm pretty sure it's a, a ripping album and um, I'm really proud of everything we've done. So, 
if um, yeah, people get the chance, please just check it out. We really put everything into it. Um, and yeah, just appreciate all the support everyone's shown us. And yeah, thank you for your time too. Awesome. Well, Sean, thank you very, very, very much for your time. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Into you, you are in the future for me right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> How are you too, Renee? Thank you, man. Yeah, you have a great night, or actually a good day. Appreciate it. Yeah, I will, man. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care. See ya. See ya. Bye.